Awesome. Well, hi, everyone. Welcome back from um, the long weekend. I hope the weekend was relaxing or refreshing or productive, if that's what you needed it to be. Um, I don't know about you, but it's it's always a little hard to come back after that. Um, so I appreciate you all taking time out of your busy schedules to be here today. Um, I know that's kind of one of the things we're talking about today, um, all of the things that you have going on as grad students and how to make that a little bit more manageable, especially as it relates to writing. Um, so as Crystal said, I'm Allison Kranick. Um, I direct the Writing Center here at OSU, um, and I'm happy to share with you today um, some tips for setting writing goals and creating writing routines um, in grad school. So we'll do a, a handful of things today. Um, we'll get started by doing a little bit of just reflection about our current uh, writing processes and practices and talk a little bit about what's challenging for us. Um, and then we'll kind of spend the bulk of today focusing on um, tips for creating writing routines, um, setting effective, manageable writing goals, um, and also working to, to create a sustainable writing routine. Um, so most of what we'll talk about today will be a, a huge range of tips um, that you can try out and sort of see what, what sticks and works for you. Um, and then we'll wrap up today by making a plan to help you tackle um, a current or upcoming writing project this semester, kind of figuring out what um, what strategies might be most workable for you. So that's where we're headed today. Um, as Crystal said, we are recording and we'll be happy to pass along the slides too. Um, so I, I do kind of want to preface this by saying I'll share a lot of possible tips and options today. Um, and what I would encourage you to do or to think about are sort of the ones that feel like they might work best for you. Um, so I don't want you to leave today feeling like I need to try 20 different things um, to help our to help create a writing routine that makes sense. Um, but I want you to kind of be able to to gravitate towards some that seem like they'll work best for you um, and your schedule. Um, I know everybody's got uh, videos off, which is totally fine, um, but do feel free to use the chat function um, if you have questions throughout. But of course, we'll have some time for questions at the end. So that's where we're headed today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get us started by inviting us all to kind of do some reflecting in the chat on our sort of current and recent writing experiences. Um, so I'd love for you to take a few minutes um, to either jot down uh, for yourself or if you're comfortable to share in the chat. Um, what has your writing process looked like in grad school so far? So some of you are um, maybe newer in your programs. Some of you have um, might be nearing nearing completion or trying to kind of revamp your writing routine. But what has what has your writing process looked like in grad school so far? Um, what parts of that process have been easiest for you typically um, and hardest for you typically? And then just kind of more generally, what obstacles have you encountered in trying to create a writing routine um, in graduate school? Um, so again, I'll invite you to, to spend some time um, thinking through some of these questions. Um, and I do have a note in the chat here that you're also seeing the presenter screen with notes. So give me a second just to fix that. Um, but I will invite you to spend some time chatting, uh, sharing in the chat your thoughts on some of these questions. And if you're just joining us, we're just spending a few minutes um, thinking through some of these questions on our slide. What has your writing process looked like in grad school so far? What's been easiest or hardest? Um, and what obstacles have you encountered in creating a routine in grad school?
Well, thanks so much, everyone, for, for sharing some of these perspectives in the chat. Um, you can feel free to continue adding to this if that's useful. Um, but I'm I'm seeing kind of a kind of a range here, right? Some of you are just getting started in grad school. You're trying to to figure out um, how to make that transition manageable. You're realizing that maybe some of the the things you're currently doing um, aren't working for you. Maybe you struggle getting started. I'm seeing that echoed here in some of the. Um, and some of what you've shared. Some of you are also talking about um, kind of making sense of reading and taking notes, but in ways that are are useful without taking so much of your time. Um, so trying to be more efficient um, and effective in that process to, to set you up for success. Um, others of you are talking about just trying to carve out enough time um, to write and sort of finding a, a clean space um, to help you get started. Um, and some of you are, are also echoing here the all the feelings that can come along with this process. So I'm seeing the word anxiety come up here a lot, um, feeling overwhelmed by the writing process. Um, maybe that's just kind of generally getting started. Maybe it's because you're working on something that feels very high stakes like a journal article or something that feels um, high stakes and is also a super long-term process like writing a dissertation. And so I really appreciate you all sharing all of these things. And I wanna tell you all of these things are completely normal. Um, I finished grad school a couple of years ago and um, grad school is a lot and it's really, really hard when you're in it. Um, and it can be really hard to sort of see the finish line. So everything that you're describing here, these are all things that that I have felt, um, even you know, even coming from more of a, a writing oriented graduate program. Um, so I want to be sure that that we get some of this out here and we kind of understand why why this feels so challenging, right? Why do we even need a workshop like this at the start of the semester? Um, so as you know, whether you're new to graduate school um, or you've been in for several semesters, um, writing in grad school is different than the writing that you've done either in the careers maybe you've had before going to grad school or writing that you might have done um, during undergrad. So the writing we do in grad school, um, you know, often asks us to kind of have new writing experiences. There might be different expectations around the quality of our work. Um, maybe we were being asked to write in new genres or new types of writing um, that we haven't done before. Maybe we're having to write more than we're used to um, or write in a, a sort of style that we're not used to. Um, and unfortunately, the writing process is also a time management process. Um, and so it can be really difficult to not just adjust to all of those different writing expectations, but also to figure out a way to make that manageable while you balance classes and teaching or research um, or other responsibilities that you have um, in grad school and then of course outside of graduate school. Um, and as many of you are kind of implying here, writing in grad school can feel really stressful um, because it's often tied to our development as scholars or researchers or professionals. Um, it's often tied to, you know, us being able to get a job post-graduation. And so for that reason, it also often raises feelings of um, imposter syndrome, right? So this feeling like I can't do it, I feel sort of paralyzed moving forward. I'm not really sure what to do here. Um, and this is common for, for all grad students, but it, it can be especially common um, for female grad students, um, grad students who identify as female to kind of feel that, that extra sense of anxiety or pressure. So again, all of this is totally normal. I know that doesn't make it feel any better um, at this point, um, but all of our research into graduate writers, um, whether you're working on long-term projects or even um, dissertation writing, that these are all very common challenges. So we know that graduate students everywhere struggle with finding time to write, figuring out how to get started. So many of you talked about this in the chat. Um, some of you also talked about kind of, you have all these great ideas, but it's kind of getting them into um, written form or getting them on the page that can be really challenging. Um, and then as you get into the thick of the writing process, 
working with those sort of big picture questions of organization and revision um, are also common challenges. So maybe that's not quite where you're at now, but they're often ones we hear from graduate writers. And again, totally normal uh, parts of this process. But um, our goal today, in addition to just sort of being, being able to empathize with how challenging this can be, um, is to help equip you with some tools so that hopefully you'll feel a little bit better about facing these challenges in the semester um, and semesters ahead. Um, so a few things, uh, a few things I've done to kind of organize um, many of the strategies and tips in this presentation, I kind of break it up um, according to where you might be at in the process. Um, so some of you chatted a little bit about um, how getting started can be really challenging, um, whether at the start of your program or at the start of a project. Um, so we'll, we'll get started by talking a little bit about how we can, can start strong um, with the project. And then we'll, we'll chat a little bit more about setting realistic goals. Um, again, setting us up for success by creating goals that are manageable for us. Um, we'll also chat about ways to create and uh, stick to a writing routine um, and how to use a writing log or a writing journal. Um, so that's kind of where we're headed. Um, again, there will be a lot of tips here, but we want to just sort of make sure that you don't feel like, oh, I need to try every single one of these, but that kind of keeping an eye out for um, strategies that might work the best for you, given the type of project um, or challenge that you expect this semester. Um, so whenever you're starting a, a newer uh, writing project or just any writing project, it can be really good to kind of ask for models or review models. So maybe you're taking a class, you're being asked to write something for the first time. You're always allowed to ask to see a model or to see an example of a, a past student's assignment just to get a better sense of like what it is you're working toward. Um, the same goes if you're working on articles for publication or a dissertation, you might find it really helpful to review the, the journal you'd like to submit to and take a look at some um, recently published work uh, from there and get a better sense of that structure. Um, same goes for a thesis or dissertation. Maybe your advisor has some um, former students' work that they'd be willing to share. Um, and of course, OSU also has repositories for thesis and dissertation work, so you can take a look at those as well. But kind of getting a better sense of what it is you're working toward can be really useful. Um, so you can see what it what a quote unquote final version of, of your writing might look like. Um, one of the, the things that can also be challenging in this sort of getting started process is that Sometimes in grad school, we get vague uh, instructions about um, what we're being asked to do. Um, and again, it's always okay to ask questions, um, to communicate with your advisor or your instructor about what it is they're looking for to kind of help make some of those um, often implicit guidelines more explicit for you. So one of the things we know from writing research is that writing development is a process that takes a really long time. And sometimes when you've been in a field for a really long time, um, you forget that, you forget what it's like to be new. And so you might not provide all of those um, instructions that can be helpful. So having a conversation with your advisor or instructors can be helpful for that. I'm also happy to help facilitate those conversations. And so these are all kind of good ways just to kind of get into the mindset um, to figure out where you're headed for a particular project. Um, early on in a process, it can also be a really good time to figure out um, how you're going to keep track of your sources or your data. Um, I see many of you are, are working with scientific projects here. Um, maybe you experiment with different citation managers or management systems. Um, maybe you're setting up kind of a, a key way of keeping track of, of sources or data or, or key readings um, that you definitely want to, to use moving forward. Um, so the beginning of the process is a really good time to try that out, um, whether that's the beginning of grad school or the beginning of a new project. Um, and if people have citation managers or any tips here, feel free to drop those in the chat. Um, OSU does have plenty of resources to help you kind of select one of those that might be useful. Um, but generally, I would not recommend um, doing something like this in the middle of the process. Um, that's just something that many of you kind of talk about is taking a lot more time um, and might not be as, as helpful or as fruitful during that part of the process. 
Um, another thing I'd like to kind of tell people as they're getting started on a project is that you actually don't have to start at the beginning. It feels like it, right? It feels like you need to have that first introduction paragraph. You need to have that first um first sort of perfect section or a perfect title, but you actually don't. You don't have to start at the beginning. Um, and sometimes it's that pressure of starting at the beginning that kind of gets in our way and, and raises some of that anxiety. Um, so instead you can actually begin with what's easiest for you. Um, maybe you really feel good about writing uh, about the methods for a study that you're doing. So maybe you start there because you feel like you have a pretty good handle on what you did and why. Um, so maybe you start there or, you know, maybe you've been doing a lot of reading and you want to focus on kind of pulling together sources or writing a lit review. Um, so whatever is going to be most helpful to kind of get the ball rolling for you is going to be a good place to start, even if that's not sort of the like chronological beginning. Um, and this is what we would call like the low hanging fruit approach. Um, so this is more of a seasonal metaphor here. Um, we can, you know, we can start by um, reaching really far and reaching really high to try to get that sort of like perfect fruit from the top of the tree. Or we can get uh, something just as good um, from the lower branches. Um, so really kind of setting ourselves up with what's easiest um, and starting small. Um, we often go into projects with that sort of big, big end goal in mind. And that's one of those things that raises that sense of anxiety for us is you're not just getting started on a project, but you're getting started on a journal article and you need to publish it so that you can graduate, so that you can get jobs. And it kind of you see, as I'm talking, right, it can kind of spiral really quickly. Um, but you can set yourself up for success by starting small, right? It really writing happens one word in one sentence at a time. So maybe you set a goal to write a paragraph, or maybe you set a goal um, to write 200 words, or to get started on your work cited or bibliography. Um, so all of those are perfectly good places to start, um, but can help you kind of move past some of those initial uh, feelings of apprehension and anxiety that sometimes um, accompany beginning a project. Um, likewise, you can also kind of think about moving forward in your process by setting small and kind of steady, realistic goals. Um, so again, this is something that's really good as you're getting started on a project, but can also be helpful to revisit throughout a project. Um, so a few things to keep in mind here. Um, many of you who, who teach um, or do research, you already kind of often do something similar in your teaching or research. So you figure out kind of what is your semester timeline or what is your, your project timeline? And you work backward to figure out kind of what you need to do to get to that end goal. The same is true for writing, um, right? So instead of saying, I need to write this whole journal article, I need to write this dissertation, we break that up into much smaller chunks and tasks and, and kind of use long, short-term or medium-term goals uh, to help us get there. And so that makes the process just a little bit more manageable um, and kind of helps keep your focus on the day-to-day. -day. Um, but what, what does that actually mean? What does it mean to set goals that are manageable? Um, some of you maybe have seen uh, the kind of acronym for SMART goals, um, and that's one strategy that we'll recommend here. So SMART goals are goals that are specific, um, they're measurable in some shape or form, um, they're achievable and realistic, um, and they're also time bound. So they're not goals that are going on forever, um, but they're ones that we can kind of put a particular boundary around. Um, so again, all sounds great, but what does this actually look like uh, for uh, writing? So some, some sample uh, smart writing goals um, are not things like I'm gonna write this whole paper the night before it's due, right? That's a pretty big goal um, and, and not sort of a, a specific or, or measurable, um, achievable, realistic way of going about this. But instead, um, you might consider goals um, that might be word count focused or page count focused, if that's something that's really motivating to you. Um, so for instance, um, you might say something like, Today, I'm going to write 600 words of this dissertation proposal. 
um, specifically beginning with the introduction of my literature and the gap that my research addresses. So this gives me sort of a number that I'm working toward, but also gives me a section that I'm working on and kind of what I wanna do with that section. Same with the second sample goal here. So maybe you're in coursework and you're working on a course paper. Um, maybe your goal is something like, I'm gonna review five pages of that paper and I'm gonna focus on making sure I have topic sentences or transitions where needed. Okay, so again, kind of that, that limited sort of measurable thing, sort of a realistic achievable thing that I can focus on um, during that writing time. Um, maybe your goals are sort of measurable in a different way. So they're not focused on how much you're writing or how many words or pages. Um, but maybe what you know you need to do is to review feedback that you've gotten from your advisor or your instructor and make a plan for how you're going to address it. Um, so again, gives you kind of a single concrete thing that you can focus on. Um, maybe you're still kind of in a reading phase or you, you've realized that you need to go back and reread something important. Um, so again, maybe you, you set out a goal to say, I'm going to reread this, I'm going to take some notes on it, um, I'm going to work to streamline that and incorporate it into my work. Um, so setting, setting SMART goals is all about figuring out kind of what, what you can do to guide your writing time, rather than just saying, I have to work on my paper, or I have to work on my dissertation, or I, I need to figure out something with my sources. If they give you something a little bit more specific, a little bit more manageable, um, but still a really concrete goal that you can focus on and you can, can know that you've accomplished um, by the end of that time. And so these can be really sort of useful ways um, of organizing your writing into those smaller chunks. Um, the problem with goal setting is that, you know, you actually have to get yourself to stick to those goals, um, right? You can have the, the smartest goals in the world, but you still have to actually do them. And that, that's often the hardest part. Um, so we'd also generally recommend finding ways to be um, accountable for your progress. And I, I don't mean accountable in a way that adds to your stress or adds to your anxiety. Um, maybe you find um, ways to set deadlines to share your work. Um, so maybe you and a, a friend in grad school are going to um, swap drafts at a particular time, or maybe you, you promise that you're going to share something with your course instructor or your advisor by a particular date. Maybe you make an appointment with the writing center and you know you want to have a draft of your introduction done by then. Um, so having those sort of self-imposed deadlines that also involve other people or other places um, can help give us that additional level of accountability um, that's useful without adding um, undue stress to the process. Um, you might also find it's helpful to have uh, accountability check-ins with um, your colleagues or collaborators or advisors. So sort of scheduled time where you, you check in with one another about what you've been up to and where you're at in the process. Maybe that's a face-to-face -face or a Zoom meeting. Maybe it's over text. Um, maybe you schedule some, uh, some meeting time to get feedback with others. Um, or maybe you just kind of need just to show up with, with other people who are writing um, in order to, to sort of get yourself to be a little bit extra accountable. And you might join writing groups that are hosted by your department or I can share more about ones hosted by the writing center. Um, so generally, right, half the battle is, is figuring out goals that are manageable, but the other half there is figuring out how you can kind of show up for yourself and be accountable. Because we all set goals that, you know, are easy to set aside. Um, so what's the thing that's gonna kind of motivate you um, to give you that extra accountability without adding that extra stress. Um, so when I was in grad school, I had a, a really close friend and we would, we would share basically on a, a Google doc sort of what we were working on that day. And then we would have to go back and kind of check off that we did it or we didn't do it. And that was something that worked for us. Um, as a way of kind of setting some of these goals, naming some of these goals, um, and knowing that if I didn't get something done, well, there was someone else who was going to know that. Um, so that, that was something that I found useful, um, but others, other people, you know, find it more useful to meet up with others to get work done, um, or again, maybe setting deadlines to, uh, to share with others for meetings or 
before you meet with an instructor. Mm -hmm. um, and again, we can talk a little bit more about, about writing groups shortly and how they can help you. Um, part of what, what can make working toward goals really challenging is if we feel like we're not making progress on them. Um, and this is really where those SMART goals come in handy because if you just say, my goal is to finish my dissertation, right? That's that's a goal you're gonna be working on for, for a while, um, for some time. And it can be really easy to sort of get in, in your head about that and to feel like you're not making progress. And so what can we do about that? We can we can keep track of our sort of tangible ways of making progress. So maybe maybe you have like a writing journal or a writing log. I'll share a little bit more about that in a moment. Um, maybe you're someone who's really kind of motivated by visuals. So you have a giant dry erase board that helps you visualize your progress. Um, maybe you're really motivated by things like metrics. So how many words you're writing or you've written or how many pages you've written or how many minutes or hours you've spent toward writing. Um, so it can feel like we're when we're in these really long-term projects, like we're not getting anywhere or we're not getting anywhere fast enough, but actually keeping logs of our progress and using these sort of other ways to, to show us tangibly that we have been getting work done even if it's small, even if it's kind of these little steps along the way. Um, these can all be really helpful in kind of reinforcing our, our motivation um, and also kind of helping us feel a little bit better affectively to know that actually we are making some progress. Um, uh, I also will say, I think one of the great things about goal setting is that you should also reward yourself um, for meeting your short and long-term goals. So I think in grad school, we don't celebrate enough. Um, and I would absolutely encourage you to, to celebrate meeting any of those short or medium or long-term goals. Um, and to figure out, again, a reward that's going to work for you. Um, maybe you want to share your accomplishments with others. Um, that can be that can be awesome. That can be a great motivator. Um, maybe you decide that you want to treat yourself to something special after you finish working on a paper or after you've made some progress on your dissertation. Um, whatever it is that's going to motivate you um, is, is something that can be really helpful. Um, for me, I really enjoyed cooking uh, and baking in grad school. And so when I would finish a, a bigger project, I would often buy myself a new cookbook. Um, I know we're also working on grad school stipends. Um, and so we don't always have a lot of luxury in treating ourselves, but um, celebrating one another and lifting one another up um, is really key here. And then figuring out ways that that you can still reward yourself. Maybe you reward yourself with a nap, um, or you know, reward yourself by um, taking some additional time off. Um, so it doesn't necessarily have to be something that you buy um, or purchase, but can be something that that you do for you. Um, and I'm always open to encouraging um, some other ways of uh, sharing and celebrating the, the work that you're doing. So do feel free. If you have something you know you want to reward yourself with, you can also feel free mm -hmm. um, to do that in the chat. Um, so this whole goal setting process, right, the sort of figuring out realistic goals, figuring out how to stick to those, figuring out how to keep track of those and figuring out how to celebrate them. That's all that can be a lot, um, but it can it can set you up for that sort of period of kind of gradual reinforcement that you are making project progress, that you are working toward um, sort of in small and steady ways project on or pro, pro, progress on a project. Um, part of what's really key here too is figuring out a routine and a schedule that's going to work for you. Um, so all of these things are are really interconnected. Um, so as we think about working toward goals, our goals can also drive sort of how we use our writing time and how we create our writing routines. Um, and so I'm gonna gonna pause here to, to ask you to share in the chat again, um, reflections on sort of your current writing habits. So what time of the day are you most productive when you're writing or like what days tend to be best for you when you're working on writing projects? Um, where are you most productive in your writing? Are you better at home? Do you need to be in a coffee shop? Um, do you need to be in a sort of little carol in the, the library? Um, and then what are sort of your biggest distractions during the writing process? 
Um, and what do you need to, to really focus on your writing? Like, what do you need in the space or what do you need to have with you? Um, in order to, to do that sort of work. So again, I'll invite us to pause here um, and share in the chat if you're comfortable or to jot down just for yourself um, thoughts on any of these questions. So kind of when and where are you most productive writing? Um, what are the things that most often get in the way as distractions? Um, or what are the things that you find really helpful in getting yourself into the mindset to write? Um, so again, I'll give you some time to share some thoughts in the chat and then we'll come back together. Awesome. Thank you so much for, for sharing some of these thoughts here. So we, we have a range of responses here. Um, again, so some of you note that you really like working in, in public, um, whether that's in your office, uh, on campus, or perhaps it's, um, oh, I'm so sorry. I totally just went backwards here. Um, maybe you prefer working in your office or library. Um, some of you note that you need to be in a, a quiet environment um, to, to work. Maybe that means um, quiet at home or quiet sort of in terms of the time of the day. So early morning or late at night um, when other things are going on, aren't going on. Um, some of you know you're more productive when you're just around other people. So you can see other people working. That helps with kind of that spirit of um, what I would call productive peer pressure. Uh, Let's see. Um, also, sometimes working with others to, to help you if you get stuck. So kind of having that, that in the moment support can be really helpful. Um, some of you know, kind of working, <laughs> the, the quiet environment absolutely works for you or absolutely doesn't. Um, because that, that may lend to it. too much too much thinking or spiraling on your part or to, to too much distracting. Um, some of you have maybe seen um, posts that circulate on social media where someone's like working in their office on campus and they have like a piece of paper taped to their back that says like, please don't talk to me because I will talk to you for hours and I won't get anything done. Um, you know, so we we all know ourselves best and what works for what works for for Pedro is not going to be the thing that works for Amy, which is not going to be the thing that works for Natasha. Um, so there is no one right way of going about a writing routine. Um, but this is about knowing yourself um, and knowing what's going to work best for you to, to get the kind of work that you need done. And this is probably going to change um, throughout the time in graduate school. Um, so I started working on my dissertation um, in March of 2020. So I, I sort of had to work from home um, at that particular time. But before then, it was really useful to be um, in library spaces. Um, but you, you also know I'm seeing some kind of distractions here. Sometimes it's about the environment. Sometimes it's about the people, um, especially if we're, we're working from home. Um, sometimes the people can be really helpful in avoiding those distractions. Um, I'll also note I have, you know, a wonderful friend from grad school, but I knew if I wanted to be productive, I could not go get coffee with him because we were just going to talk too much. Um, and so, yeah, it's just about kind of recognizing where you are and what you need and owning that, um, figuring out what those distractions are. You know, sometimes distractions are good um, and what you might need in order to kind of signal to yourself that you're getting some work done. 
Um, so again, we're not trying here to impose any one particular writing routine um, on you, but to help you kind of think about what's going to work best for you. Um, so again, just kind of like we talked about with getting started and also creating SMART goals, part of what we want to do here is to, to set ourselves up for success by creating an environment um, that works for us in terms of writing. Um, so finding a space and setup that works for you. Maybe you're really into working at coffee shops. Maybe you have a favorite library on campus. Um, maybe you have a you need that sort of space at home um, so that you can kind of have a, a less unpredictable space. Um, so finding a space and setup that works for you, working to minimize distractions where possible. Right? Sometimes we know that that's not possible. Um, but if you're able to set your phone aside, if you know it's really distracting to be in a quiet space, um, then try not to work in that sort of space. Um, maybe silencing texts from particular people can be really helpful. Um, closing out of email. I, I know I hear a lot of people get really lost in email um, because that sort of quick moment of, oh, I'm just going to check my email real fast can turn into this sort of longer thing. Um, and then also kind of gathering gathering what you need. So some of you mentioned before, like you really need just a clean space um, so you can kind of spread out to work. Um, Maybe there's particular tech that you need. Maybe you need noise canceling headphones. Um, for me, one of the things that I really tried to do to kind of create uh, a writing space and just to kind of get yourself into that mindset um, or get myself into that mindset is like, I love when I'm at home burning candles when I write. So since I was dissertating during the pandemic, like that was really important for me because I was just home 24 seven. And so when I would light a candle, and like sit down, that was really key for me. Um, also, I was a big fan of coffee flavored yogurt and uh, lightly caffeinated sparkling water in the afternoons to kind of push through some of those, um, those lulls. But the things that are kind of gonna signal to you and your brain that like, this is my writing time. Um, so if any of you struggle with sleeping um, and you're a grad student, so you might, um, you often hear kind of one of the solutions to getting a better, more restful night's sleep is, um, you know, having sort of a, a sleep routine. What are the things you're going to do right before bed that are going to help signal to your brain and your body that it's time to go to sleep, right? We're really talking about doing the same thing here, but um, <laughs> hopefully it's not to signal you to sleep, um, but to signal you that this is your writing time. Um, so a lot of this is about kind of creating an environment that's going to work for you. Um, and this is also about creating like time and timing that works for you. Um, so you're writing just like your teaching time, just like your time in the lab um, deserves to be scheduled and protected. Um, so schedule it like you would a meeting with a meeting with your advisor and protect that time. Um, treat it like you would another obligation. Sometimes it's just us. And so it can be really easy to say, well, I have control over my time, so I can just do this other thing instead. Um, but really, really try to protect it as you would um, an important meeting or an important appointment. Um, we've already talked a bit about goal setting and kind of breaking writing time into smaller, um, both smaller chunks of time into smaller tasks. So we can look at that in a moment. Um, but again, I know a lot of people feel like I haven't been writing, I'm behind. And so the strategy then is to kind of do like what we might call binge writing and to just say, okay, I'm going to write for eight hours today, right? That's a lot. And maybe that works for you and maybe you can do that. Um, but often what people find more effective is to, to write for shorter amounts of time, um, and maybe Maybe just to do that more frequently or to do that kind of being guided by smaller tasks. So it's really good for you to kind of be in your projects often so it remains fresh in your brain. Um, so you don't have to spend so much time trying to figure out where you left off. Um, but it's also good for you to have breaks and to not be in your project all day, every day. Um, so again, a lot of this here is finding balance um, between kind of a, a routine that works for you, but also one that allows you to kind of be in your project a lot, but also um, to do things that don't have anything to do with your writing. So a balance part can be really, really tricky. Um, in our writing groups, we often use um, some version of 
uh, a Pomodoro method where we determine how long we're going to write and, and when we're going to take breaks. So traditional Pomodoro method, if you've tried that, is 25 minutes of work followed by a five minute break. 25 minutes of work, five minute break, 25 minutes of work, five minute break, and then you might take a longer break um, after, after a few of those um, individual Pomodoros. Um, but again, part of creating a writing routine, this seems really silly to say, is just to decide, okay, like when are you going to schedule that time? When are you going to take breaks? Um, what are you going to do during that writing time? And then again, breaks are really important. You know, you're human beings. It's good for us to get up and move around. It's good for us to grab some water or food or fuel or whatever we might need. Um, really trying not to, to check your email or get sucked in by whatever those distractions might be. So all kind of part of scheduling and protecting that writing routine. Um, and again, just like we can use SMART goals to kind of guide our, our writing practice, we can also use them to create a writing routine. So maybe we use sort of these sample SMART goals to kind of guide our writing routine each week. So maybe I say, I'm going to work on my dissertation for two hours a day, Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. Mm -hmm. um, or I'm going to write 500 words a day during the week or five pages a week. Um, I am not suggesting here that these should be your SMART goals, but I'm saying these are examples of them. Um, so setting aside particular time um, or, or putting some of those kind of metrics, guiding metrics, the words per day or pages a week um, can be really helpful because then they can kind of feed into your writing routine. So then I know that whatever I'm doing on those days I'm writing, I'm going to be focused on writing 500 words, no matter how good they are, um, or I'm going to focus for two hours a day. And so I need to kind of break down my work into tasks that can be completed in two hours. Um, again, emphasizing a few things here just to just because they're really important. So just like goals, we can create a writing routine that sounds really, really good, but it's another thing to implement that in practice, which is why it's so important just to figure out a schedule that's gonna be realistic and that works for you. Um, maybe you have friends who like to, to get up really early and write, great. If that doesn't work for you, you don't need to do that. Um, that's completely fine. It can be really hard to kind of, or it can be really easy to compare ourselves to others and to figure out kind of what other people are doing and to feel like we're behind if we're not doing the same thing. But the important thing is that you pick a schedule that works for you. Um, again, that you would protect that time as you would a meeting with your advisor or um, some other really urgent uh, meeting and that you commit to showing up for yourself, um, whether that's you know, showing up for yourself so you can kind of reward yourself for showing up or having some of that kind of friendly accountability with people in your program um, or people in writing groups can be really, really helpful. Um, we also have through the writing groups, I think some of you have mentioned this in the chat, um, the OSU Writing Center offers writing groups in the fall, spring, and summer. Um, and our goal here is to help you in creating a writing routine and sort of create that experience of having a community and having that kind of positive sort of feeling of, you know, I'm showing up to work for myself alongside other people who are doing the same. Um, so we offer these uh, virtually um, every semester. They're getting started this week. Um, if you're interested in trying them out, um, we offer them uh, kind of Monday through Friday, usually some morning times and then afternoon times. Um, so you just kind of commit to showing up for yourself and for other people. You get started by sharing some short goals, again, hopefully some SMART goals. Um, you have timed writing time and then you have a chance to share um, what you've accomplished and celebrate what you've accomplished. So they're kind of a microcosm of all of the, the tips we've just talked about here. Um, but they can be really good, especially as you um, get to a stage where maybe you feel really sort of isolated in the writing process. Um, so this is a great way to cultivate both a writing routine, but also to have a sense of community. Um, and yeah, I really appreciate um, Amy's noting in the chat here how useful um, those groups can be. We're also working to um, bring back some in-person options if that works better for your schedule, but um, writing groups were, were really invaluable to me too. Um, so I would definitely encourage you to, to try them out and see if they might be a valuable addition to your schedules um, too. 
And um, yes, uh, you can you can join at any point in time when you register at this link. It's just go.osu.edu backslash writing groups. We use the same registration link every semester. You can also use this QR code. Um, when you sign up and register, it will send you a, a Zoom link that we use for all of our writing groups, and it will send you the calendar that we use as well. Um, so sometimes people say, oh, I'm going to try to be at every Monday group, or sometimes people kind of come and go as it works for them. Um, so you're you're welcome to, to come and go as you please. Um, I do think it's great when people can, you know, commit to showing up weekly. That's part of creating that routine. But we also know that sometimes you just have, you know, more writing going on at particular times of the semester. So um, really, this is kind of a whatever works best for you. Um, but we would love to see you there. And occasionally we have some extra incentives, um, you know, gift cards and that sort of thing to help um, create some of those external motivators too. Um, let's see. Um, just a, a couple of kind of final notes here. Um, one of the things that can be really challenging as you manage writing projects in grad school um, is that you're often working on multiple things at the same time. You might be working on an article while also working on something else for class. You might be writing your dissertation while also trying to write job market materials. So part of what you'll need to figure out as you develop a writing routine that works for you is figuring out how, how do you work to manage multiple projects simultaneously? Do you, you know, are you the kind of person who can work on both projects the same day? Do you need to be in a completely different headspace um, to do those? For me, it was really hard to do anything related to like teaching um, when I was working on job market materials. So like, you know, you figure out kind of what works for you. Um, and you kind of have to constantly reevaluate your priorities, like what makes sense for you at the time, um, revisiting your goals, revisiting your timelines um, and priorities can be useful as time goes on um, and as these projects maybe shift. Um, and then of course, working to take strategic breaks um, from writing. So that means if maybe I have a, a dissertation chapter um, that is due at the end of the week that I work to get that in by the end of the week. Um, and I know that I'm then going to set aside that project while I'm waiting feedback. Um, so maybe next week I focus on my other project. Um, so just kind of thinking about asking for feedback at strategic times or taking strategic breaks um, so that maybe you're still getting feedback on a project that you might not be working on that week, but there's still some project progress being made. Um, the, the last sort of tips I'll share here are ones that I've kind of alluded to um, across all of the other, the other strategies, getting started, setting realistic goals, and creating a writing routine. So this is just another tool that can sometimes be useful, is keeping a, a log or a journal um, to sort of guide your, your writing session. So maybe this is where you articulate some of those SMART goals for the day. Maybe this is where you get out um, and, and articulate some of those anxieties um, or, or difficulties you might be facing as you bring into your work that day. Um, and then afterward, they can be a place where you kind of keep track of your progress, where you celebrate what you've accomplished. Um, maybe something took you longer than you expected, or you encountered some different challenges, um, or you want to make a note of, like, I wanted to get to this today, but I'm going to have to wait until I pick, up again, pick it up again. Mm -hmm. um, these can all be really helpful in kind of dealing with some of the the kind of goal setting that we've talked about, but also getting the, the affective part of this out here. So I'm actually going to share with you an example that I have put together from my own um, writing log, and then we will kind of wrap things up here and work to make a plan for the semester. Um, so let's say that I um, was attending a fall break writing retreat hosted by the Writing Center. Um, and my goal was to, to kind of take a look at some um, chapters from my dissertation and decide whether I wanted to um, submit a conference proposal um, for a particular conference. Um, and I knew that I would need to kind of go back and look at the call for papers to see if my project even makes sense with the theme or if I should consider alternate places for this work. So that's kind of what I set out to do um, for my writing time that day. Um, you'll see uh, my sort of recap here, and this is how I've chosen to, to break it up. 
this is not sort of the only way to do this, but I'm a big fan of kind of bullet point notes here. So you can say here where I get out some of those, those feelings, like I'm not really sure whether my work fits the theme, um, but I'm also feeling like I really need to apply for this conference anyway. So I'm kind of wrestling with that. I'm noting I'm having a lot of trouble with focus, but here are the things I did. Um, and kind of what what might might be useful. So I decide maybe to look back at some previous conference proposals that I didn't get to present because of COVID um, and that maybe they're enough to help me get started on an abstract. And I know that I was able to get started on that, um, but I, I need to come back to it next time I'm doing this work um, to work on my organization and, and sort of the length before I submit it. So again, this is just one example of what a writing log or writing journal might look like for you, but it, it gets out all my feelings. It gets out my sort of mental space. Um, and it helps me see that even though I really did have trouble getting work done that day, that I still made a little bit of progress and I, I'm still kind of further along than I was. Um, so I tend to keep these in like Google docs. There are apps you could use, um, you know, you can use your phone, you can use whatever is, again, is useful for you. Um, but just another kind of possible tool that you might find helpful in your toolkit. Um, and I, I want to note, you know, a few things here, because anytime we talk about focusing on productivity and creating routines, there's, there's always sort of a risk that we um, risk making you feel bad that maybe you're not there yet, right? And so I just want to say a few things that I wish people had maybe told to me in grad school, um, which is that it's okay for you to take breaks from your writing without feeling guilty. You're allowed to take weekends off and you're allowed to take evenings off and whatever else you need. Um, you are not, you're a human being, you're not a robot, right? Um, and it's also okay to fall behind. Sometimes things take us longer than we expected, um, whether that's our work for an individual day or our time in a program. Um, but just trying to kind of be forward looking here and figure out what happened that may have caused you to fall behind and how you might be able to move forward um, more productively. I know people say this all the time um, about dissertations, that a good dissertation is a done dissertation. And I never wanted to believe that, but now that I'm on the other side of the process, um, I do really feel this to be true, that it's okay for your writing to just be good enough um, and good enough for now and good enough to, to finish this project, good enough to turn it in. Um, it's really hard still to accept that internally and mentally. Um, but then it's also okay to ask for help and to just be patient with yourself. Maybe that's getting support from the writing center or getting support from your cohort. Um, maybe, maybe it's, you know, finding a therapist to help work with you through grad school, like any of that is, is okay. Um, and it's good to, to be able to advocate for yourself. Um, so writing happens one word at a time, and that is kind of a joy of the process, but also a, a sort of pain in the process. Um, and we know from some, some work on motivation and goal setting that um, the middle part of a process can be really, really hard because you're kind of have you're past that initial maybe excitement or joy of starting a project and you're feeling really far from the finish line. So that middle process can be really hard, um, but all of these, these sort of strategies can help you as you get through that. Um, and to wrap up for today, um, I know some of you may have to, to run, um, but I'd love to, to invite you to kind of spend a couple minutes here thinking about um, what your next steps might be. Um, to put a writing routine into practice. So maybe there are other strategies today that you you heard about that you want to try out. Um, maybe you want to start kind of mapping out what your ideal fall writing routine might look like. Uh, maybe you might brainstorm some ideas for holding yourself accountable or how you might celebrate achieving your goals or your progress. Or maybe you, you think um, a little bit more about the support you currently have um, and the support you might need to seek out as you continue working on this project. Um, so I'll invite you to just take a, a couple of moments to think through some of these things. Again, if you're comfortable sharing in the chat, you're welcome to do that. Um, and then um, I'll be happy to, to stick around for some questions here. But anything that anybody really wants to, to try out or um, experiment with in the coming fall for your writing routine.
yeah, definitely feel free to to join our writing groups. And I'm also always happy to um, come to come to your department and help you kind of figure out how to set up your own writing group if maybe you find that would be more productive um, for you and and your coworkers and colleagues. Um, some of you are are talking here about maybe trying the the journaling approach. Um, doing some of that goal setting and just kind of getting it on a schedule or a calendar, all great ideas um, for this. Um, so like I said, I want to be respectful of your time here. I know people are hopping off. Um, so I am going to stop sharing here and I'm happy to, to answer questions um, or chat with anyone. Um, but again, thank you all so much for taking time out of your schedule to, to be here. You should definitely put this on your to-do list for today and cross it off. Um, but you know, keep at it. It is, it's a process, right? It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. Um, all of those cliche things. Um, but it sounds like lots of people are maybe going to try out this journaling approach. Um, and I am always someone you can come to to say, you know, someone who's not in your program, who has, you know, no authority um, over your projects to just sort of say like, it's going to be okay, right? It really is going to be okay. Um, but it's hard to remember that um, during the process. So thanks so much, everyone, for joining today. Like I said, I'll stick around, um, but uh, we'll send the recording out. And I wish you all the best with the fall semester. Do always feel free to reach out if you need anything, okay? Thanks, everyone.